Long time back, necktie evolved as a direct result of war. In 1660, a regiment from Croatia visited Paris. The soldiers were presented to Louis XIV, a monarch. At that time, the officers of the regiment had worn bright-colored fashion handkerchiefs around their neck. These neckcloths, which descended from the Roman Fascalia worn by orators to warm their vocal cords were soon made sign of royalty as the king made regiment of royal corvettes. Later, this style crossed to the Channel of England and no soon the gentlemen found their dressing more decorative with some sort of cloth around their neck. These neckcloths or cravats were worn so that the man could not move his head without turning his whole body. Sometimes these were worn so tight that they stopped sword thrust. Again, necktie styles knew no bond with scarves, tufts, and bows. Ties became an integral part of a man's wardrobe until the time of Civil War ties were imported from the continent. In the beginning of 20th century, American neckwear began to rival that of Europe. In 1960s, however, there was a declination of men wearing ties because of conflict in between tradition and formality of dress. But, in 1970s the sale of necktie increased to a great extent. No other thing in the wardrobe of a man has changed as compared to neckties. In 1960s and early 70s ties grew 5 inches in width and then fat ties came into fashion. The proper width of a necktie that would never be out of style is 3 and a half inches. As long as the proportion of men's clothing remains true to his body shape, this width will be in proper balance. Many neckties are cut in width, but the section of the tie where not is made remain thick although. The relationship of tie knot to the collar of the shirt is considerable, and if it is proper then the knot will never be too large, so that the collar opens or it is so small that it is lost in the collar.